Hey everyone, Anthony Bouchon, Developer Relations Engineer here. Today, I'm excited to talk about how you can better protect the resources in your GKE clusters using Backup for GKE, Google's fully managed and configurable backup and restore service. So let's dive into it. Now, one thing users love about Kubernetes and GKE right out of the gate is the resiliency that their workloads get by default. Kubernetes controllers ensure that workloads are constantly driven to your desired state for them, even in the face of transient failures. With that said, sometimes changes might be made to a workload configuration in error, or users just require additional protection against workload data that isn't accounted for by Kubernetes alone. With critical recovery point objectives, some users may not be satisfied by this default behavior. See, these users may want to perform point-in-time backups of Kubernetes resources and their workload data in their cluster, and then have the control to choose what to restore and where to restore from these backups. This helps them minimize data loss in case of things like user error, application failure, disaster, and helps them meet their recovery objectives. So enter Backup for GKE, a fully managed solution to automate the backup and restore lifecycle for GKE users. Backup for GKE can perform backup and point-in-time restore operations for users across two dimensions. First is the backup of Kubernetes configuration for resources running in your cluster, the actual YAML itself. We can think of this as the state of the cluster, both cluster and namespace scope resources that are persisted in the Kubernetes control plane. Second is the backup of data residing in persistent volumes utilized by workloads. We can think of this as the state that is owned by the workload, like stateful workloads that mount volumes and write data to these volumes. With Backup for GKE, you can back up all cluster and namespace resources in your cluster while also backing up stateful data in persistent volumes. And if you want, you can perform more granular backups for a set of selected namespaces in your cluster. You see, each individual backup that you perform using Backup for GKE takes its shape from a backup plan that you create, which defines the scope of your backups. These individual backups from a backup plan can be scheduled to run on a regular cadence or can be performed manually ad hoc. And when the time comes to perform a restore, each of these individual restores will reference a restore plan, which defines what backup plan to use and what resources to restore when restoring to a cluster. Restores themselves can also be granular, restoring either an entire backup or just a subset of a backup. And given that Backup for GKE is its own fully managed cloud service, you can also use IAM to restrict who can administer and perform these backups and restores. With Backup for GKE, so many patterns to meet different recovery objectives are possible. For instance, you can backup all resources and data in one cluster and restore all of them to a different cluster in the event of a disaster. You can also backup all resources in a cluster and only restore a specific namespace to the same cluster with its respective workloads and their volume data. And to get started, you can enable Backup for GKE on an existing GKE cluster without any changes to your Kubernetes resource definitions. But what if you wanted more specific logic, orchestrating backups, or a set of components? Backup for GKE has something for that too. You can create a custom resource called a protected application. This can group together specific resources within a namespace that you want to backup and restore. This custom resource can also carry out additional logic specific to your application with its support for pre and post backup scripts. To learn more and get started with Backup for GKE, check out the links in the description. And as always, thank you for your time.